Hey guys, um, this is an impromptu uh, inbox review um, because obviously today is the 74th anniversary of the Allied landings on Normandy or specifically better known as D-Day and ironically this turned up today um, which is very apt considering uh, 74 years ago today these aircraft were in involved in the landings given much needed air support. Uh, Spitfire, as you know, is the most famous fighter of the Second World War. Uh, was used in all virtually all theatres of war throughout the uh, period of 1939-45 and more specifically during D-Day. And uh, this is the second of, well, two spits I've got with D-Day markings. Um, the reason I got it is basically because you've got the added um, flight crew and ground personnel that come with it. So you basically got a ready-made diorama in this kit. Um, hence why I bought it. But, you know, the fact that it's turned up today of all days is quite poignant. Um, so without further ado, we get on with the uh, box art. I mean, the box art itself is beautifully painted. Depicting a typical scene um, with through with many of the airfields in England uh, during the course of the 6th of June 1944 on D-Day. Um, you can see the two spits are basically climbing away. Um, he, they've obviously come back from an operation and another one is basically getting ready to go off on another um, patrol over Normandy. Um, there's this, and this guy's trusty uh, squadron mascot has turned up to see his owner. So there we go. Again, the kit is in 148. Um, kit number, if you want to get hold of it, is 48801. And I think this kit has been out quite a while now. And then obviously you've got the box art on the side there. And there's only one actual option in this kit. Sorry, it's gone a little bit out of focus here. Um, and that is of a kit of 126 Squadron, um, kit, aircraft of 126 Squadron. Um, so there you go. Right, let's open it up. Same typical RCM box. You've got the box top there with the box R and then a white box underneath with a little flip here. And then on the top, we've got the instruction sheet, which we'll go through now. Nice little pamphlet, very simple. Um, one instruction sheet for ground personnel and sprue tree, and then the assembly of all the um, pulleys, etc., and ladders, etc. And then you've got a little unit with the oxyacetylene uh, canisters, uh, obviously for moulding and welding, etc. And then obviously you've got one here with a little tool thing. So that's really, really nice. And then on the back here, you've got the colour call-outs for all the uh, figures, okay? And again, they I think they refer to Model Master colours, but again, if you get the Hobby Colour app, you can cross-reference it with any other uh, brand of paint that you're using. And then obviously here is the main instruction sheet for the Spitfire itself. Again, you've got your sprue trees with all the parts there on the top little symbols throughout the course of the build and unlike most aircraft kits the first part of the assembly is the actual engine itself the old Rolls-Royce Merlin engine and once you've done that you basically put it connected to the firewall and the actual uh, struts which hold the, the engine okay along with the radiator grill underneath and then the next process is basically you put the side walls in with the various parts and you can have the option of cutting out the actual door and having it open okay and then obviously you've got the assembly of the cockpit uh, bulkheads and seats um, control column rudder pedals etc and then once that's connect, you do that you basically put the uh, control column together with it and it goes up through the underneath the fuse large once you've buttoned it up and obviously you've got the tail planes here now for some in some reason you've got an um, option of two why i don't know 
and again when you actually put the cockpit together you've got the option of the canopy open or not okay and you've got the choice of two mirrors so you may have to do your research on this particular kit and obviously you've got the fuel cap which goes in engine cover goes down so you've got the option of having the engine uncovered um, and then you've got the option of two rudders on the back as well why I don't know and then you assemble the wings uh, okay um, you can have the clip version or basically the standard um, concave version and again you can have the machine gun bays open or not and then obviously if you do you've got the brownings which go in okay or you've got the ordinary ones if you want them buttoned up and again you've got the possibility of putting rocket rails on it so the assembly of that a bomb or another couple of bombs which go under the wings and then obviously you assemble the uh, propeller blades to the propeller hub um, you've got the uh, option of a large fuel tank and I know some spits on D-Day did have them um, or bombs um, or rocket rails it's entirely up to you which one you want and then obviously you've got the radiator air grill which goes on the wings and then the air grill a radiator grill which goes on the bottom of the nose fit the propeller to the propeller nose put your um, elevators on and then assemble the undercarriage and then that is basically your kit built and then obviously again down here you've got model master colour guides but again as I stipified earlier you can actually convert them on the hobby colour app if you've got it on your phone so basically that's your kit built and then obviously you've got colour pull out right here of one option which is of a Spitfire of 126 Squadron, June 1944, flown by Squadron Leader J. Plagueis. And he had 17 victories to his credit. So there you go. But I must admit, with those D-Day stripes, he just makes that kit aircraft look so sleek. It really does. So there you go. Right, then we'll get into the crux of the matter, which is the kit itself. Now, again... Like I see them normally do, all your sprues come in one resealable bag and they have actually got the option of the clear parts in a separate bag, which is good news. Okay, so we'll take the sprues out and have a look at them. First off, you've got the left side of the fuselage. Again, all the internal detail is there. Beautifully crisp, detailed. And that should come up really nice when you weather it inside with a wash, etc. Um, then on the back, if I turn it around the other way, you've got the firewall here. Um, the cockpit floor. Uh, part of the main frame for the bulkhead. And then obviously you've got the wheels all in one mould, which makes a change. Although there is a little bit of flash there, so you might have to sand that down a little bit. On the carriage legs, which are quite detailed. Control column, which you can see here. So that'll look nice, dry brushed. And then obviously what I may well do is just put a little bit of clear in on some of the dials, just to accentuate the fact that it's probably glass dials. Then you've got the oxygen tanks here rudder pedals and then the control column right there and various other parts which go on the side wall beautifully produced as you can see here tail wheel there as well sorry if it's a little bit out of focus guys and then you've got your browning guns here and if you wanted them open, obviously they'll be on another sprue. Uh, but I must admit, even the panel line detail in the outer part of the fuselage is beautifully caught. Cool. And I love the way they've got the rivets on there for when they fasten down the engine cover. Okay, and then on the other part, which is the right-hand side of the fuselage, which you've got here. Again, just as beautifully detailed as you can see there. Is your propeller blade a little bit of flash but again you can sand that down so it's not a problem and then obviously you've got the various components of the merlin engines itself there which is beautifully molded and then obviously the frame it sits in as well and there's your exhaust subs so yeah it is gorgeous 
It really is gorgeous. Mind you, I've heard, um, I think it was Chris from Chris and Alex Modeling, because he built the Mark 7, that uh, the fit of the engine is not that great when you try and put it in. So you're going to have to do a little bit of work on it. Still, I'll find out for myself next year. Um, and then third sprue, you've got all the engine covers, and surprisingly, you've got the wing tips here from Mark 7 high altitude version and then there's your radiator which goes on the wing and then obviously you've got your edge of your wings there there's your bomb rack and your bombs browning machine gun sorry it's out of focus which you can see here beautifully welded that looked really nice welded up if you look when it makes own irks working on it so that's that one Fourth sprue is obviously the covers for the wings for the uh, machine gun bays. And then obviously, surprisingly, you've got two sets of tail planes in one mould. Hmm. Well, I don't know. And then there's your fuel tank, if you want that on there. Rocket pods and racks. Bomb again and racks. Nicely moulded, beautifully caught, you can see there. There we go, and then obviously you've got your wings, wing halves, again, panel line detail and the rivets on them are beautifully caught on there, exquisite, it really is, and then there's your elevators for your wings, I think this is going to build into a beautiful little kit, although you can get Edouard aftermarket just to accentuate the kit even more if you want to, which I might well look into. And then the final sprue is your clear parts for your canopy. Now, disappointingly, when it comes to the main bulb, the part here which you use to open up the cockpit, there is a bit of distortion there, which is a little bit of a shame. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. But the actual front part of the canopy, that is going to be so easy to mask. There you go. So that's that. I'm just going to put them all in the bag. I mean, it does look a superb little kit, I must admit. I mean, I've got, well, how many have I got of ICM spits? I think they're about three of them now. Um, I've got another Mark 9, which I think is the one with the beer barrel, and a Mark 7. I'm going to to get them the Russian Mark 9. As well, um, that's quite a nice one. As I say, they do include quite a range of Spitfires in their kit range, and uh, yeah, the early ones had issues, but uh, you know, I mean, the way they're building their kit, they're producing their kits now are exquisite. And I would love to get a, that HE111, I must admit. I really would love to get hold of that one. Well, surprisingly, I am surprised they haven't done any Stukas or Tempests or anything like that. But, you never know, in the fullness of time, they may well do that. Right, let's have a look at the other bag of screws, which is all your personnel and tools, etc. Right, let's get that one out. Again, in a resealable bag. There's your desk for your work surface, and they've really faithfully produced, I don't know if you can see it in the light, the wood grain on it is exquisite. There we go, I don't know if you can see that guys, and then obviously you've got your ladder there, and there's your little machine work uh, thing, or your grinder, whatever it was, I don't know what they used on there, um, and then your figures, Flight crew, I mean the folds in the tunics are beautifully reproduced, as you can see there. Mind you, RCM do do a good figure set, so I have to say, and some of the ERC, and the pilot that's count going into the cockpit, and then there's his May West, which you can see right here. And the ERC as well. Even the parachute pack on the back is beautifully produced. 
as you can see there. And the sculpt and the faces is nicely done. Um, if I can find one. Here we go, we've got the WAF officer there as well. Beautiful sculpt on the face as well. And there's the pilot, cat, the CO's trusty old dog as well. Golden Retriever. Um, and then obviously you've got your oxyacetylene tanks there. Pulley. If they were working on the engine. And even the jerry can. Really nicely caught. Beautiful detail on this. I'm really impressed, I have to say, and I'm really looking forward to building this next year, I must admit. So there you go. Get them back in the bag. And then finally, we've got the decals. Now, the only problem is I've heard the decals can shatter. Uh, so I may well source an aftermarket set um, and possibly not use the decals here. They, I must admit, they do look extremely shiny. Whoops. A few stencils there, and obviously you've got the kits, uh, squadron markings, and the name of the aircraft was Muscat. Uh, it's obviously got an Arab connection from maybe their campaign out in North Africa. But um, uh, they look very shiny and very thick. Um, so I've got a feeling they're going to be a devil to bed down. So what I think I will possibly do is look out an aftermarket set and see what I can produce. So there you go, guys. Guys, that is basically um, ICM Spitfire Mark IX with RF pilot and pilots and ground personnel. Um, does look a super little kit. And um, I'm sure it built up into a lovely little kit as well. And um, if you want to get hold of one, by all means do so. But I would suggest you get some aftermarket decals just to cover yourself. Um, I have heard nightmares about some of their decals, about the fact that some of them they just break up, etc. Once they water hits them, so. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play safe with this one. I should still do it as a D-Day bird, but and possibly the markings of this aircraft, but um, when it gets to the time of the build, I may well possibly get this into a group build if we do have a D-Day GB next year. Anyway, on that count, I shall end this video. I hope you enjoyed the inbox review. Um, and remember if it hadn't been for those guys on the beaches and parachuting etc we wouldn't have the lives we've got today so lest we forget the veterans of d-day anyway until the next time get kit crazy happy modeling and i'll speak to you soon